Welcome to the Solid Canyon University channel. This video's topic is creating a turning tool library. So in a lot of the videos, you see me using different tools of different types, but how do we actually create those turning tools? We're gonna to cover that in this video today. Um, I'm gonna create what's called a global library. Uh, difference between a global library and the active library is basically in the software itself, before I even open up a part, if I go to tools, solid cam, tool library, and then create tool library, I'm actually going to create the global library. It's a library that exists in the software as a, as a, as a whole. It's a library you could pick from in any part file that you open up. If you create a tool of this type, like we're gonna see in this video, but inside of a part file, you have a file open, you're looking at your part, you're adding tool paths, and you decide to add a tool there, that tool only exists in that part file. It's what's called the active tool library that you've added that tool to. That being said, there are ways to take tools from the active tool library and add them to a global library or convert an active tool library into a global library, but um, we can cover that in, uh, in a previous video. Um, here, I'm just gonna create a global library. I'm gonna create a, uh, a, a couple of turning tools just to show you the differences between the two. So obviously we're talking about turning. I'm gonna create a turning library. First thing we do is we need to give it a name. So let's just say we're calling this turning library. I can relate this library to a particular machine. If I click on related machine, it just brings up basically just my list of um, the post processors I have in my list. And every time I open up one of these posts, it will default to this library. So that's basically what you would choose, why you would choose a related machine. If you leave it blank, then it doesn't automatically load with any particular post. That's really all that's happening when you choose a related machine. So I'm just gonna click okay. And here we are at the library manager. Uh, it's currently blank, meaning that we're gonna add tools to it. And we're talking about turning tools. So when I go to the bottom left, I'll see an icon that says add turning tool. So we'll just click on that. Now, obviously on a lathe or a mill turn, you have the ability to add all kinds of drilling tools as well. But specifically this video, I'm gonna talk about the turning tools, the actual boring bars or external turning, grooving, threading, whatever type. Um, and those usually come in two types, the composite tools we see on the top here and the solid tools we see down here. Now, you can already see there's a huge difference in the icons themselves. That's to help you understand which one is which. But we'll start with the composite tool. So I'm just gonna do an external turning tool. The composite tools are the simplest way to define a turning tool. Essentially what you're doing is you're choosing your insert and then your shank. And you choose them from some standard, uh, standard nomenclature, something you'll see in your actual catalogs. In this case, let's make a CNMG 432. It's a pretty common insert. You'll see that the name is actually popping up right here. That name is just showing me what I've chosen in these pull-down menus. And you can see it's all just pull-down menus because again, it's all from standards. So let's say we're gonna make a CNMG. So I'll see right here. So insert shape, C, so I don't have to change that. Clearance angle, let's make that an M. Tolerance, our tolerance for a CNMG is actually M. And you can see as I'm doing that, this name is changing. Cross-section, I'm gonna make that G, and then again, just the dimensions. So we're gonna go four, three, two. So as I change those, that shows me the name of the insert, and literally that is the insert. I'm just gonna order from a catalog or just pull off the shelf and put it in my shank. Um, everything else in this window is just kind of giving you an idea. Here's a dimension drawing of what you've chosen here. Cutting edge information. You can pull from there. Again, just icons showing you what that means and cutting direction. So essentially, uh, which part of the, of the tool or which uh, spin uh, that you're cutting, basically um, left, right, or neutral. Second tab over here is for the shank. Again, pretty standard stuff. That's why you really only have uh, manual control over two dimensions, the M and the N, and they're represented here and here. The insert clamping for the shank, you choose from this list here. Insert shape, I'm only gonna have the one option because I already defined this in my insert section. Lead angle, again, from a standard table. Cutting direction, again, it's only ha it only has the one because I defined that in the insert section. And then the rest is from a list. 
standard, standard, and standard. So once I develop all that, we get a tool that looks like that. And you'll notice that it is basically just two, two colors, one that represents the insert and one that represents the shank. So very simple in terms of definition. It's really just more standard kind of stuff. Whatever you're looking at in terms of your catalog or, or your setup guy says he has available in the shop, whatever it is, you put it here. Um, one quick note, if you're not sure what to choose for the shank, but you know that it's gonna clear and you don't really care about um, all this information over here, you just wanna have something to, to machine, um, you can just check this box that says insert. And what that'll do, if I just bring this tool picture back up, is it eliminates the shank. So you're still programming off of the tip of the insert, you're programming your tool path just like you normally would, um, but you're not concerned with collisions with the shank. You know that whatever you've got on the machine or whatever you've got in the shop to put this insert inside of will clear, uh, there's no real concern. You can just change that to insert only and it'll program off of the, uh, the insert. Uh, one additional thing that pops up is when you check the box for insert only, you can still put in your insert angle. So you don't have a shank that tells you that angle anymore, you can type it in there. And again, you just represent the insert only for whatever purpose. The second type of turning tool on the bottom here is solid tools. And these icons pretty much let us know what we're about to get into. Let's say I do an external roughing as well. It is just the profile, just the these dimensions you see here of your turning tool. Um, and then all of the dimensions are represented here. So this is a much more complex definition, but it's still sort of simple because there's certain things in here that you might not really be concerned about. Um, the F and the D dimensions, um, chances are those aren't gonna collide with your part. So I usually advise people, just worry about these dimensions over here, the D1, D2, alpha, beta, um, maybe even B and A, just for clearance issues. Everything else here is just kind of, just again, just kind of cosmetic definition. The reason you would use this over the the composite tool is if you have some sort of oddball shank or even a, a unique insert. Uh, you can see here there's nothing here to give the same part number for the insert as you saw with the composite tool. You can't really just type in or choose from a menu CNMG, but if you know the dimensions of your insert, you know the dimensions of, let's say, the CNMG, then you can plug them in here for D1, D2, alpha, beta, uh, see all this information. Um, but again, this is usually for, uh, you know, carbide boring bars where there, there's no insert. It's just uh, a unique tool that is, 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 is a solid, uh, solid tool. Uh, you can come in here and just de define these particular dimensions. Um, and like I said, if you're not really sure what F and D and E should be, um, I usually say just make D rather large because really it's just this A dimension and the distance, be, uh, the combined distance of A and B that really matter in terms of the, um, the simulation. Uh, whatever this thing is on the, on the back here is really just the interface between this, this um, solid tool definition and your holder. Um, but otherwise, all these dimensions here are fully under your control. Um, another thing that, uh, th that this is usually used for is even if it is a standard insert and a standard shank, Maybe um, over time, you know, your, your, your tool, you find that it's just a little bit, uh, the angle's correct, but there's just this one tip right here that you've ground off. Uh, we always do that in shops. You know, every once in a while, there's a tool that's just a little, you gotta just kind of grind it a little bit to clear whatever it is, the specific op, uh, part you're working on. If that's the case, then again, you have this ability here to define these outside dimensions. Even if it is still a standard insert, you've defined these dimensions to better represent your tool. Um, another thing with this is if you have some sort of special tool that you've purchased from a uh, tooling supplier and it's using a special holder and you need to define a special insert to go in there. Or it's a standard insert, but um, the holder itself, the model that you got, the STL file that you got from your, your supplier um, shows everything minus the insert. So you need the insert to just float in space there. Well, you could either do it with the composite tool check this box, and then align your, your part to your STL, like we've seen in a previous video, this one right here. Um, let's say we had uh, just our definition of the insert floating in space. I would line that up with my STL, like you saw in this video. Um, you can do the same thing with the solid tool. Uh, you would just mate this representation to your STL as best as possible. Again, if your D is rather large, then you have just a 
a, uh, a boring bar that has a width of A sticking out every STL. As long as everything lines up and there's no collisions that don't make any sense, then you've got a proper representation of your turning tool. Um, now, in terms of tool data, uh, the fees and speeds, we covered that in a previous video as well. So you can take a look at that. At, uh, it was a recent video, variable spin units for turning. So again, pretty much you have two types. You have the composite tool, which is just inserts and, and just a standard shank shape. And you have solid tool, where you have to give this entire profile here. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.